Excellent. Let's get started. So welcome, Frank, uh, on the on the series related on um, well, Microsoft 365 features and open source and community stuff. What's just being built? So uh, Frank is is working in Ubisoft. Or why would I actually introduce you, Frank? Who are you? Can you do a quick? <laughs> Thanks for that. So uh, I'm Frank Cornu. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer at Ubisoft uh, in Montreal, Canada. And uh, yeah, today actually we're going to talk about a new open source project uh, I shared a couple of weeks ago at the ESPC conference. Uh, obviously about search, and what a surprise. And yeah, so I'm Microsoft 365 uh, MVP, uh, Office Development, and um, yeah, involved as well in the open source community. Yep. Uh, probably you know yep. me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Frank, I, I'm going to call the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you people, people probably, some of know that, but you were one of the fundamental person creating the really widely known and used BMP search web parts, right? Yeah, a couple of years yes. ago. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, with Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Svensson yeah, and absolutely. a few other contributors. Yes, and, well, uh, yes absolutely. Um, but then uh, now, now this time we're talking about something related on search, something related partly about those web parts, but it kind of got evolved as part of your work with the, within the Ubisoft. So what are these components? What are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, actually, this, uh, just to, to make sure from the beginning that this is not an evolution of the PNP modern search web part that we'll present yep. there. Just to make sure this is not really related. Uh, this is initially, initially we had at Ubisoft. So basically at Ubisoft, a couple of months ago, years, actually one year, uh, we decided like, to change our internal search engine. Uh, we had um, SharpOne 2013 with BCS connectors, and we decided to move uh, something else. Uh, so that was not, we, we didn't decide like Microsoft Search at the beginning. We had a few steps before that. But um, basically, we had to do a revamp of our old uh, search application, because a custom application. Yep. And of course, we have already Microsoft Search. Um, or basically our vision of the search at Ubisoft uh, uh, was to provide like more a service, such as a service, and not really a monolithic application that uh, users can and users can use and uh, employee can can go, uh, but more like uh, provide the search to every application, to all applications at Ubisoft. But Ubisoft, we have many many custom application, uh, other application, and we, we wanted like to provide the search embedded in their application and consume the search uh, from their application. So not really, uh, not, not a, a monolithic application, uh, a custom application. Yeah. Uh, so it's not actually, I, uh, initial objective wasn't really to have a, a SharePoint or Microsoft 365 hosted application. It's basically getting the search features yeah. to yeah. your custom applications. So. Yeah, absolutely. and actually, so that was the, the, the first thing and also revamp our, our, our old app, but also we, we we could we could just say like okay there is an API for Microsoft Search you can just use that but the thing is at Ubisoft we we don't have Microsoft 365 developer actually I, I'm, I think I'm the, I'm the only one so we can say use the Graph API because basically people they, they don't know that they don't have yep. time to do that they don't have the budget to to, to create custom things over yep. uh, Microsoft's Graph so we wanted something like uh, ready to go uh, use that connect to that and that's it don't you don't have to remake the, the the search experience the filters the results yep. the templates whatever we, we wanted something like uh pre-packaged something like this so that's yep. why we uh we built basically some reusable components that's the whole point of that that can be used anywhere uh in the ubisoft ecosystem so that's the, yep. the, the whole point and then those are connecting to data within the microsoft mm -hmm. Traces to five years in microsoft absolutely Crash. so basically we started the project so to have by evaluating all these sources we had internally, because we have a lot of sources internally. Yep. Uh, and the, the, the main benefit, I will say, of, of Microsoft Search is you, you can embed, uh, actually, you can ingest your custom data into the graph uh, to yep. have connectors. And we have, actually, we had um, default connector provided by Microsoft uh, for, let's say, common ones like SQL Server, uh, Confluence. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, maybe. But uh, yeah. and you can build your own if you want. And that was yeah. also a part of uh, a reason about uh, what we choose Microsoft Search is we, we can build custom connector pretty easily. So in our case, we use the C Sharp uh, SDK. Yep. Uh, there is a shape SDK for to do that. Uh, I'm not a C Sharp developer at all, but it was really, really easy to do. Uh, you just have to implement some methods and you're good to go. Uh, the only complexity is really on the on the data source side. 
yeah, yeah. to connect. But uh, they, basically, we had the opportunity to integrate our data into Microsoft Search, uh, into the graph, and that went really well, actually. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to build a connector. And uh, so this way, we, we integrated uh, many, many sources in our, uh, in our ecosystem. So we're able yep. to connect them everywhere. Yep. That's the yep. good thing. And actually, so a bit of an off topic on, on this particular video, but of course, when you're ingesting the data directly using Microsoft Graph connectors, then all of that data is also in Microsoft Copilot. And, and that's kind of the next steps in the journey. But let's not talk about that one in this video. So that's a separate discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We are not there yet, but of course, yeah. it is all based on search. And yes, yes. Uh, we will be able to use that data for Copilot as well. Yeah. Excellent. So um, I think the easiest way to show what you've done is, is let's jump on your screen uh, and let's do a live demo and you can call out how it actually works and, and uh, the, how it has been implemented. So let's flip on the bit of a different view here um, and you can take over from here. Uh, yeah. So what I want to show you actually uh, first, let me do something. Um, yeah, is what you are seeing. Here is the uh, the components. So this one are the open source components uh, shared on GitHub. So maybe uh, you will put the link uh, uh, associated to the, to the video. But basically, uh, these are reusable component. If you already know the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, uh, that's pretty familiar because it's based on Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And the reason we uh, we decided to um, expose those components as an open source solution is because basically Microsoft Graph Toolkit is an open source solution. So that was fair just to share what we did uh, around this uh, uh, on this area. So um, pretty simple, actually. The, the, the component can be used um, pretty much in any HTML application. Um, we provide basically the same component as the PNP modern search web parts. So we have a search box. Uh, we have the verticals. We have the filters. And we have results. Uh, an interesting thing, uh, actually, about, about the result, and just to talk about our strategy at Ubisoft, um, if you know the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, you already know that you can, you can create templates based on the data. Uh, but in our case, we didn't use really the, the templates provided by Microsoft Graph Toolkit, but we use more like adaptive cards uh, behind the scenes. Uh, the reason is because Microsoft Search can, can be consumed from many, many locations. Like it's not about, it's not only your custom application, uh, it will the result will sh will uh, will show like in the office.com, big.com, SharePoint, uh, and if you use custom template, it means they won't be you, you you won't be able to use them in other locations. So yep. using adaptive card, it's like the, the we, we we centralize the the, the templates and it shows pretty much the same everywhere. That's that's the reason behind that. So. Of course, in the open source components, you can use the MGT templates and um, also the adaptive cards. So on the right, you, you can see the components. But if I go, let's say, on the page behind, uh, behind this, uh, just to show you, no, not there, sorry. Uh, no, it's there. So, as you can see here, yeah, we'll just go down. So just regular web, com web components that you put on your page. So as, as you can see, there's verticals, filters, result, and the configuration is directly uh, inside attributes. So as yep. a, a, a stringified string uh, JSON. Um, and basically, you can connect them together. Uh, for instance, the first search filter is connected to search results. Um, the search result is as well connected to search verticals and so on. It all works by IDs. Uh, on the page, so we have a mechanism like uh, basically the components sync together on the page where where you where it, dis it is displayed, um, and you can configure pretty much the same option that, that you had in the PNP modern search web parts. Uh, but the thing is, it's only targeted to Microsoft uh, Graph, so there is no sharp on search anymore. Right? Yep, I think it's time to move on. <laughs> uh, we... <laughs> yep, that's fair. That, yeah. That's what we shared in the developer blog as well. So it's good to focus investments on the Microsoft yeah. uh, craft-based yeah. APIs, definitely. At first, we had some, OK, uh, can we do all the thing we, we could do with the Microsoft, the, the search, search API with Microsoft Search API in Graph? And the thing is, yes, you can do pretty much the same and more, much more, yeah. especially when you uh, go with Graph connectors and ingest data into Microsoft Graph. That's the, the huge benefit of that. You can, you yeah. can do pretty much the same thing. 
so yeah, uh, it's only targeted to Microsoft uh, Search, so no more SharePoint Search, uh, SharePoint REST API uh, there. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty simple. Of course, this page is pretty, let's say, complex. We have a lot of options, uh, but it can be really, really simple, like uh, just a query text to display results, and that's it. And um, I talked about as well the um, the template. So as you can see, there is a template there. Uh, we provide different templates, but for let's say the loading part and also for the results themselves. Uh, but it's, it's really, really, really simple as well. Uh, you can do plain JavaScript here, or we also provide, as I mentioned, an adaptive card component that you can just um, actually you can you can write the JSON payload directly in that component or point to a, a the shared location of file, uh, let's say in SharePoint or whatever, uh, yep. accessible. Yep. So, yeah, if I go to the experience there on the on the right, um, it's pretty it's pretty simple. What what we did um, actually that that's the thing you see here is really literally the same thing we had at Ubisoft, except that at Ubisoft we use an internal design framework. Uh, of course, that is not shared there. So these are the fast components. If you know. Yep. The bits this is a component made by Microsoft, uh, by the way, uh, and uh, so we replace basically all the component internal components we have with our design uh, framework with the fast components. So yep. I'm not a designer. Which are using Fluent? I can't remember which version, but anyway, Microsoft. Yeah, Fluent it's faster. basically it's Fluent. The Fluent is just a wrapper yes. for fast components. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so as you can see, it's, it's pretty basic, but it does exactly the same uh, that we have at Ubisoft. So we. We have some, let's say, uh, aggregations there for the file types, for instance. So you can say, okay, the, the file extension matching, uh, let's say, uh, docx, doc, whatever, it's what documents. You can do the same for every uh, every uh, every type of file or any value, actually, you can use. Uh, we have also a filter dates uh, with uh, predefined ranges, and you can do a from and to as well. Um, yep. And uh, some basic stuff like pagination and so on. So the goal is really for you to not do the same thing all over again because it's really generic. So you can use it in any any scenario actually. Uh, and also um, we integrated the sort feature as well, sending descending. So again, really basic stuff uh, related to search. No really fancy yep. stuff. Uh, another things we have to do uh, is deal with videos. Uh, at Ubisoft, we have also many, many, many videos and uh, in stream, in Microsoft Stream, and we had to do um, something to see the video. Um, just a quick note about video, um, a challenge we had with that. Uh, it's because we had a custom application outside of the SharePoint domain. Uh, we had to find a way to display the video, a preview, and play the video directly from a, an external application. Um, yeah. To do that, you have to basically call the graph because you don't have, if you just put the URL and click on it, you will get like a, actually you will have to log in and if you are not on the same domain, it, it won't work anyway. So we provide a, comp a special component that basically uh, call the graph gets a pre-built URL with the token so you can see the video directly in, in a, from an external application, let's say. So let's cool. see if I click, I click there, it just load stream uh, video directly from SharePoint behind the scenes. So it's a little trick we had. And also we did a little trick, as you can see, uh, there is like two play button. I uh, don't know if you, if you saw that, but if I go back there and I go to video, there is a first one. That's a little trick we, we, we did actually. Um, so there is the first one there. This is, this is basically a fake play button. Uh, it's because yep. to manage performances, when you have a lot of video on your page and you love, and you load the page, basically it loads iframes behind the scenes if you just take the stream player and it consumes a lot of terrible performances that that's not really good. So what we did is just uh, create a component, put a, a fake play button, and if you click on it, we add uh, uh, actually the video in, in autoplay mode. Yeah. There, yeah. It, it doesn't work because it's not configured, but we configure all the browser that you have to use the autoplay uh, mode. So if you click on it, it's just like you clicked on the fake button, it, it works like this. So it's yep. a little trick, but uh, when you do custom application, that's uh, kind of things you have to, you have to do. Yep. Anyway, and another thing that we did is about the localization. Um, at Ubisoft, we are, as this is mandatory to have both English and French, uh, especially in Quebec. Uh, and that part actually was partially covered by the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, we have localization options. But basically what we did is uh, 
complete, let's say, localization system that we can just switch the URL completely, uh, the logins completely on the, on the page. Um, cool. So yeah, it's, it's really cool, uh, really, really cool. And you have a lot of ways to customize uh, localization uh, for file types, for, anyway, for any, any labels you can see in there. You, basically, you can just translate in any language. So yep. that's really, that was also a, a key thing in our application. Um, other than that, pretty pretty simple. Um, so to consult those, those components, you have many, actually you have two ways. Uh, we provide like a bundle you can just include in your page. Uh, so I don't have it there, but basically it's a script that you can put uh, directly in your page, in your HTML page, or we, we have an NPM package as well. So you can consult the component and actually rename the component the way you want. So let's say if you want to rename uh, PNP search post by anything else, you can just register to an, another name and consume it to your application. It could be a React application, yep. it could be something else. Uh, a good example of that is uh, we provide both components, web components that can be consumed anywhere in any HTML application, but we also provide web parts. Because like I said uh, earlier, we see like search as a service and service as such can be consumed by any application and Chapot is part of the any application. Okay. So basically what, what we what we did is uh, we build web part over our web component in such a, in such a point. The only thing is um, in Chapot to do something uh, to do actually web parts and integrate components, you have to use SPFX. Uh, so we basically build web parts over, over that. And yeah, so we have the old PNP source web parts. Maybe I can change the IE icon because it's not really clear what component is what, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically we have the same component, but again, that's the same uh, type of component, but not the same uh, web parts. Yep. Yeah, and this is pretty much the same thing, but uh, like I said, targeted to Microsoft Grad and Microsoft Search only. So you can you have the, the notion of entity types, so you can uh, configure to get data uh, from external items, bookmark, whatever, acronyms, and so on. As you can see, there is an advanced mode, but we are working on the little basic mode for more casual users, just to help okay. them to configure the query. Uh, that, that, that won't come soon, but that's a requirement we have on our site. So, but yep. it's there. But it's, it's way out, but it's there. Uh, um, the same thing. So basically, just a wrapper of our web components. So we can just it would basically put the attributes on on the web component behind, behind the scenes. So um, uh, we have uh, static values uh, there, uh, sort result types, whatever. And for all components, we have also the, a way to to template to build custom templates. So um, we have the default um, experience, and we, we can you can also define the templates uh, inside there. So, oh. yeah, that's kind of different of the PNP modern search web part. In, in the modern search web part, we had some pretty fun layouts. I would say like cards, list, slider, mm -hmm. whatever. In this case, that's not really the same. It's more like default custom, and in the custom, you define all your templates. So it can, it can be, for instance, for the data like this. Or let's say shimmers, whatever, and that's that's the the, the way it works. So yep. makes sense. Makes sense, and it's available for all web parts that uh, provide templates. So it's filters for the same, search boxes for the same, it, and it's not a template for um, the old experience. In web components, you have the notion of slots. It's a little bit technical, but basically, we expose some part of the component you can customize. So it could be the filter name, it could be the whatever, the result, the, but it, it does not mean you can control the whole experience, like you can override everything. Uh, that's not the way it works. And uh, I can show you that uh, right away. Let's say I will take the, um, which one is it? Filters. I really need to change the icon because it, <laughs> yeah. <it's always laughs> <Different date. laughs> I have to read the description to see what <laughs> is this one? Is it this one? Yeah, it is this one, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just connect it to the um, to there, uh, and yeah, for uh, for um, filters you can as well uh, configure all the uh, aggregation and so on. But uh, in the template, like I said, you can just control, for instance, the filter value or the filter name and so on. So let's say. Yeah. Uh, 
So the behind the scenes, it's this called uh, slots, web components. Uh, normally, it should work, yeah. And you can see that I said uppercase, and you control just the experience of the, of the filter. Yep. Uh, the, that's the really cool. So you can consume those components um, in SharePoint and also in any uh, application, um, so directly in HTML page or from your favorite yes. framework. Uh, now, before we let's stop with the screen sharing, can you can you share the location? Where was where are these components? Just as a reference, or we put it obviously in the in the recording on and same. Uh, where are they? Uh, actually, yes, sure. Uh, good. So we'll just grab the URLs and the GitHub. It's under the Microsoft Search um, organization on GitHub. Uh, so I just need to close the link, but uh, yes. Um, too many screens, too many windows, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, OK. Should be, oh, come on. Yeah. Excellent. Can so you, underneath yeah. github.com slash Microsoft dash search, yeah, and then absolutely. in there. Microsoft yeah. search, PNP modern search components. Uh, like I said, it's another initiative because in Microsoft search, you have um, PNP modern search, and now you have the search component, the core component. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's not the same. Um, and basically, you can just run exactly the same thing as me. So cool. you can just go uh, on your page and uh, for the components, just serve them. So just yep. really, really be simple. You just, you just go on the on the package there. Sorry, uh, where is it? Uh, yes, uh, you go in the component there, the component folder there, and just uh, run pnpn uh, run serve. I don't know what the console is just broken, whatever. Uh, yeah, something like this. Yep. I, I would just serve locally the components, and you can just test. The thing I did not mention is, of course, to access your results, uh, you need to connect to Microsoft Draft. And the way you connect yep. is by creating a Azure AD application or a natural Azure AD application. Is it the right name now? I don't yep, know. that is the updated yeah. thing. Yes, same thing. So. Same, yeah, same thing, but different. Um, differently. Uh, so you have to create an application on Azure AD on your tenant, and you have basically we use the same uh, provider at the MGT ones. So it's just a wrapper over, over that. We just yeah. rename them uh, PNP to avoid uh, conflict. If you use already MGT, uh, you can have conflicts in the names. Uh, yeah. Provide a client ID and uh, redirect URL, basically. Actually, the, 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 the tenant, add, if you want a redirect URL, um, and you're good to go. And don't forget to um, allow permissions in the application as well for Microsoft yep. uh, Search, like search. consume yep. external items, you have to uh, uh, approve external items, mm -hmm. dot, uh, read, dot, all, whatever. Yep. Otherwise, it won't work. So that's the prerequisite to, to consume those components. And for the search web parts, that basically is like any other SharePoint framework application. They so, just work magically. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yep. Now, let me actually, let's stop for a quick from a screen sharing. This is really cool, uh, awesome intro. We'll get the, the URLs and everything on the video notes and, and also on the video text. But now, Frank, I'm, I'm kind of an interesting, because this question might come from the other people who are watching the video. Why on earth Ubisoft and you are sharing these components Why? free within open source for community? So. Uh, the first thing, uh, because like I said, we, it's it's all based on on, on open solution. Like we use yep. MGT for our own internal application. So to me, it's just fair to just share what we what we have. Yeah. First thing, and also we are not the Microsoft 365 company. Like we don't we we make games. We don't make like Microsoft 365 products. So sure. actually, sure. there is no reason to not share yep. this kind yep. of thing. Like it yep. doesn't hurt anybody. There is no. Uh, IP there, there is no configuration data here, that's just yep. generic stuff. So yep. otherwise you will have to do this by your own and it, it takes time. Trust me, it sure. takes time to, to get this. <laughs> and sure. also it, it, it got tested by uh, thousands of users at Ubisoft. We, we are like 20,000 employees. So we have, yep. we already know what's, what is working, what's not, so that's the thing. That's really cool. And I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back and um, contributing back on the community. That's always really, really thank awesome. You. So it, it helps on growing the ecosystem and helps on, on bringing other opportunities. And even though you would be a Microsoft 365 house, 
sharing back will basically evolve the ecosystem and create yeah, sure. the ecosystem larger and then therefore increasing the market um, and therefore you know more customers being interested on things but anyway so um that that's really really cool uh, that these are now available now a few more questions um so what about contributions are you are you actively looking into people contributing there is that part of the thing or is it more given as a here it is and and we'll see what's going to happen in the future uh, sure everyone is welcome to contribute of course the, it can can be pretty complex at first when you see the code and all those things so yeah but of course if someone wants to contribute it's an open source thing so Yep. Let's go. Uh, we had some talk with the Microsoft Graph team, Microsoft Graph Toolkit team to integrate those components into Microsoft Graph Toolkit. It's a little bit complicated. We don't use the same stack, but yep. uh, because they already have such results components, if you look at the at the library, the latest ones. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So that's for now. That's not in the that's in the plans, as far as I know. But uh, um, yeah, everyone can contribute, uh, fix bugs, whatever. We have a lot of. The main difference now we have tests on the on the <laughs> between Pentium and modern software parts. So now we have tests, so we can just we can start adding some tests, some documentation. Even if you are not a developer, you can just add scenarios and yep. templates or something like this. And and then the, the 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 from a licensing perspective, are these MIT licensed? Yeah, it's MIT license so... like any other. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, so... you could use them for any purpose. Yeah. So and that comes back on if you are whoever is watching this, if you are a, a Microsoft 365 consulting house, you could actually, you know, take some of these components and then you can provide the support for your customers. So open source doesn't have enterprise level support, but yeah. of course, whoever is whoever can and is willing, they can offer support on top of the open source and as a service for whatever. Uh, within their customers. So yeah. that's one way of taking advantage of the open source. Um, absolutely. So. Yeah, and all the thing I, I didn't show, I didn't mention is we have also like Microsoft Gratuity, we have a, a playground uh, when you can go uh, actually where you can go to just test the component live without deploying them without yeah you can, you can just just explore the behavior so like all, also it's in the, the the GitHub repo but uh, just to mention you can just play with them without deploying them. Yep, that's actually really cool as well. We'll put put that one on the references on yeah. the video as well. Cool. Um, but I guess that's it for now. So Frank, thank you, Frank, on joining this one. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And and yeah. and thank you, thank you, Ubisoft, also, and allowing um, people contributing back on the on the open source and being actively involved in the community. And thank you, Frank. You've been fundamental on on a lot of these search components and web parts and things throughout the year. Uh, and I, and I can only imagine how happy you were on finding Ubisoft and getting to know do this kind of a you know project. Yeah, that was. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's a really cool. Actually, we pushed like the boundaries really far with Microsoft Search, and we have a lot of challenges. But that was really, really, really cool on that. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, that was the perfect project for me. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can definitely imagine that. Yeah. But I guess that's it for this video. So thank you, Frank, uh, on this one. I will add all of the references in the video notes. Um, and of course, please um, let Frank know uh, if you like what what Ubisoft and Frank has been sharing uh, and uh, use the GitHub component from the components from GitHub as well. So um, feedback is always welcome. Any last words, Frank, from your side? Uh, no, feel free to, to share, feel free to use and provide the, your feedback. Uh, it's, a, it's a new solution. So of course we expect like issues and deployment issues, whatever, just don't hesitate to, to post issues. Um, even though I'm not really involved in the PNP modern search anymore because I don't have any really time to do that. Uh, for this solution, we are working on it at Ubisoft, so we have this. We, we can just work on on it. It's more. It's it's easier. So yeah, provide yeah. feedback, use it, uh, contribute. So yeah, don't, don't hesitate. Cool, cool, excellent. Thank you, Frank, for this one. Awesome discussion and awesome solution. Brilliant work on that. Yeah.